Scenario number two. I'm shooting in a relatively small space and I have a white wall behind my subject, but I don't want it to be a white wall. I'd like it to be a bit of a darker gray. What can I do? Let's imagine that you are shooting in a very small space. In fact, I'm going to shoot this series of images all within an eight by eight foot square. So a very small space. It could be a small bedroom, small part of the living room. And what I want to do is I want to change what the background looks like. I'm starting with a three foot octobox here and my subject right up against a white wall. It's not a white background. It's not anything special. And I'm going to be able to have my subject against a clean white background. So I'm going to talk through how I go from white to gray to black and just show you what you can create in a tiny space where using your control of light is really what allows you to create the variety of headshots. All right, so let's start off right here, real close to the wall. Quick headshot. Now what I've got is when I'm really close to this wall, the problem is, is her head is going to cast a little bit of a shadow. And so I can bring the light around more to the front. And what it actually does is it casts the shadow behind her. So it won't be nearly as visible. So I'm going to bring this light just a little bit more around front. And that's because the light is going to wrap around and it kicks it back. So there's a tiny bit of shadow created by her hair, but it's not very, very noticeable. It's not super distracting. It still gives me kind of a, a clean white background. Now, if I move her out from the wall, can you give me like a couple inches? What it's going to do is it's going to separate her from the background and it's going to make the shadow less defined. When she's close to the wall, the shadow that she's casting is really, really crisp. So here, what it's doing is it's making it softer. It's less noticeable. Looks great. So it's kind of a mostly white background, but let's say that I don't want it to be pure stark white. I want it to be a little bit more gray. So what I'm going to do is things that are closer together are more similarly lit. Well, I don't want the main light that's hitting her to also hit the background so much. So I'm going to move her away from the background. So I'm going to bring you up just a little bit and I'm going to match this light. So what it'll do is I've kept this in the same position, but I've moved her away from the background just a bit. And so it'll go a little bit more gray. And so now I don't have a pure white. I have that gray, but let's say I want it to be an even darker gray. I could move her further from the background, but in this case, I'm, I'm working in an eight foot by eight foot space. I can't move her back very far. So the next thing that I can do is I can bring this light in even closer to her face. So when I bring it in nice and close, it increases the fall off of light, right? It's like being close to the light in that gradient that we studied. So I'm going to bring the light in even closer, which is going to brighten up the exposure on her face, which means I'm going to have to close down my aperture just a bit. So now you can see that part of the frame, part of the exposure goes much darker and the background does get a little bit more gray. So I would like to push this as far as possible. I want the background to be as dark as possible. So I'm going to move her up as far as I can in this eight foot space. So I'm going to move you maybe right to here so that my light still fits, that I still fit. And the last part of this equation is I'm going to feather my light. And so by angling my light, what I'm doing is I'm actually pointing it. So it's not at the background anymore. It's just pointing across her face. I'll be pointing across her face off of the background. So not much light reaches the background. It's actually pointed away from the background. So the fall off is it's going that way. I'm not going to get much light. So it should go very, very dark. And then I'm going to bring my light in so close that it's just barely out of the frame. You can do this with headshots and it has a fantastic benefit. The benefit is the closer the light source is, the larger it is relative to the subject, the softer the light. So if I bring it in super close to her face, it makes it really soft. It also makes the light fall off quickly, which makes the background darker. So I'm going to bring it in as close as I can, super feathered, just out of my frame. I know I used to think you could never shoot a light this close, but you definitely can. Beautiful. And I get almost a completely black background in this eight by eight foot space, just using a basic Octabox. Um, there's one other trick I want to show you a type of lighting pattern that I really like. It's something called checkerboard lighting. What checkerboard lighting means is the dark side of the background is next to the highlight side of the face. 
and the dark side of the face is against the highlight side of the background. And that has to do with angling your light. So what I can actually do is I can frame up so that it goes shadow highlight, shadow highlight, which is where it gets the checkerboard name. Beautiful. I'm gonna angle it just a little bit more. Let's get a little more light on the background there. Perfect. So you can see it in this frame. The background, shadow against the highlight side, shadow side against the highlight side of the background. So it's checkerboard lighting. If you look at a lot of masters of photography, if you look at some of Irving Penn's portraits, he did this all the time. And you actually don't need to be this far from the background to do it. You can do checkerboard lighting with just a couple of feet of space and a white wall. Scenario number three, I'm taking a portrait and my subject is casting a distracting shadow on the background. I don't want this shadow, so what do I do to fix it? I can move my subject further away from the wall and then vary the angle of light as necessary. Things that are closer together are more similarly lit. If you move them apart, they're lit more independently. So can you back all the way up to that background for me? Okay. And let's take one quick shot here. If you take a look at this shot of Jen, the light, uh, the light on the subject is also hitting the background because they're close together. And also you'll notice the shadow that's cast because they're, they're so close together, the light on the subject is affecting the light on the background. But if I want them to be lit independently, I've got to increase the distance. I'm going to keep the distance of the light to my subject the same, okay? But the distance between my subject and the background is what's going to change. So just right there, perfect. So the distance between the light and my subject stayed exactly the same, which means my exposure will be the same, but the light is barely hitting the background. So if you want them to be similarly lit, if you want the light hitting your subject also to light the background for you, maybe you only have one light and you want to purposely light the background, you have to move all of that closer together. So let's say that you want the light illuminating your subject to also hit the background. Maybe you want the background to be lit a little bit, but you only have one light. Well, then what you need to do is you need to compress your scene. You need to move her and the background closer together because when they're close, they're more similarly lit. But if you are getting light that you don't want to hit your background, if you move her away from the background, it's going to make the two separate. 